in our gospel today, we come across this wonderful scene, this encounter of the young man in other gospels, the rich young man, who approaches Jesus and who asks him a simple question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Pope John Paul II liked to compare this young man to all of us. Because first, all of us, regardless of what we have or don't have, we're all rich because everything in our life, even our very breath, is a gift. It's a gift given generously and abundantly from God. But even more, we are like this young man because each one of us longs to be happy. And not to be happy in a kind of momentary way, not to be happy just today or tomorrow, but to be happy forever. It's what we all long for and what we all desire. And oh, that we could be like this young man and turn to the one who can answer us and turn to Jesus and say to him, how might I be happy? How might I be eternally happy with you? And of course, Jesus says, follow the commandments. Order your life according to what is true and good. And boldly, the young man says, well, I do that. Now, maybe we aren't quite there yet. But he says, I do that. And Jesus says, it's not quite enough. And then he looks at this young man with love. Just as he looks at you and at me with love. And he says, follow me. That as Jesus gazed, with perfect love upon this young man, as he gazes with perfect love upon you, he says, follow me. Because it's in following him and following the one who longs for and desires us that we find our happiness in this life and in eternal life. It's in following Jesus that we live our vocation. We had the privilege and the joy here in the Archdiocese of Boston two days ago to witness the ordination of nine new priests. And this is the season of ordinations when priests all around the country, when young men all around the country are being ordained. And we can see in these young men the joy of following Jesus of letting him be the instrument of grace and of mercy in their life and being willing to give up everything, which the world would say is crazy, which the world says, how could you do that? But you could see, certainly in these past days, but in the life of priests, maybe you know, you can see the joy of living out a vocation well. You can see the joy of following Jesus, of being, as a priest, united to him. And our prayer, our desire every day, no matter what our vocation, is to follow Jesus, to see at every moment his gaze, to see his face looking upon yours with love, to see the one who says, trust me. And so I ask you today to ponder your own vocation, whether you're a priest, whether you're a married husband or wife, whether you're a widow or widower, whatever you may be, to see Jesus loving you and giving you strength and grace and knowing that when we give him everything, he gives us even more in return, himself. And I'd ask you, especially those at home, to pray for those young men who even at this moment, God is calling to serve him and to love him and to give up everything as his priests. 
You know, very often young people today are, are filled with indecision, are filled with fear and anxiety, not just about God's calling to priesthood, but even about marriage. And we ask for that outpouring of strength, that they could see the one who is calling them is the one who gazes upon them with love, and that they would know that grace and that face of Jesus, that face that looks upon you, that face that you know, that they too can be filled with the confidence and the certainty that he is with them and that the one who calls is with us and loves us.